So the department was kind of first established around 2005. Um, so I think what was important there was it kind of elevated some information functions that had existed in the organization, organization previously, but kind of elevated it to a department level. And I think it also kind of recognized the need to manage information as content, different from how IT would manage information within a system environment, for example. So uh, shortly after the department was established, uh, we did a information assessment and although the, at the time the city had in place the ERP system, for example, and the GIS system was also quite well established, there were kind of areas within the city where information was very much still managed within different silos across the organization. So I think one of our key roles uh, was to try and improve that siloed situation. One of the, the gaps that we identified early on was in, in the space of development information. Um, so with a lot of the development information related knowledge assets such as policies and plans, uh, statistics, indicators, research, etc. Uh, that was part of the information set that was kind of scattered or siloed across the organization. So one of our early initiatives was to establish a knowledge hub for that subset of information, which we call the Development Information Research Centre. Together with the actual development of the, of the portal, we also put in place a policy around information and knowledge management. But it spoke to kind of key principles of information management, such as information should ideally be kind of in a central environment as opposed to being based in departments. Um, also, there should be metadata, for example, attached to the information assets, giving you some indication of, say, when the report was published, for example, when it was approved as a, as a policy, you know, is it still applicable? So those were the kind of types of governance mechanisms that we tried to build into the policy, which was then aimed at supporting the sustainability of the tool as well. So the open data policy was approved in 2014 and then the actual portal was developed in 2015. So in terms of the drivers for that, I think it was kind of twofold. So on the one hand, there, were, there was some engagement with, with kind of data uh, groups, so NGOs that were involved in data, also data advocates, and, and that kind of informal forum kind of expressed the, the need or the desire for, for government to make data more easily available. And then the other was linked to the city being designated the world design capital at the time. And one of the cities that the political leadership had engaged with was, the, was Helsinki, um, who had been the previous designated world design capital. And they were very strong on open data. So I think in that context, the political leadership at the time then embraced the open data concept. And it was kind of decided to go through the formal process of putting a policy in place. Um, so we went through that process. Um, the, the policy was, was quite practically focused, so very much focused on implementation. So I think that assisted us in terms of uh, putting in place uh, the portal fairly quickly after the, the policy was approved. There has been a lot of growth in terms of the data that's made available. We've also kind of added enhancements, so especially on this GIS space. Uh, whereas previously the data had to be manually uploaded onto the portal, it's now integrated into our GIS system. So as soon as the data is up, updated in our internal systems, that kind of gets fed into the portal as well. So I think the main challenge relates to, to the governance aspect. So I think the putting together kind of, or having a system and putting together a, a new system or tool, that's kind of the easy part. I think the challenging part is the actual governance, ensuring that people continue to use it, that they're not creating kind of separate tools for managing their information, which then kind of 
defeats the purposes of having an integrated system. And then also the kind of maturity levels um, across the city is quite, is quite uneven. So yes, there are some departments that may have dedicated resources in terms of data management, information management, but then there are many departments where that role is kind of performed in addition to other functions. And in that kind of context, uh, the, it's always the kind of more urgent maybe functions that's, that's more directly tied to service delivery that will get priority.